By 1967, World War II was a grim memory of times that were, thankfully, long behind us. However, its consequences could still be felt. In addition to the dead, there were millions of survivors who carried the brunt of the trauma. On the other hand, those responsible for barbarity were in prison or in the grave, although a few were still fugitives from justice. In the small town of Achak, located in the southeast of Germany, there was a prison intended to house women. Among the inmates, there was one that stood out above all the others, a 60-year-old woman with deep blue eyes. In her youth, she had been very beautiful, and she looked harmless, incapable of harming anyone. However, the other inmates observed that her behavior was extremely disturbing. Her mental stability was fragile, and she suffered from severe hallucinatory episodes. She was convinced that there were people sneaking into her cell with the aim of torturing her. In her dementia, she claimed that they were the prisoners of the concentration camps, who had come to take revenge for all her crimes. The other women had heard rumors about her, though it was impossible to tell what was true and what was pure gossip. The only certainty was that her name was Ilse Koch, that she had been tried for crimes against humanity and that she was known by different nicknames, the witch, the beast, the bitch, or the butcher. For years she was the boss of the Buchenwald camp, where she built a reign of terror and she was hated and feared in equal measure. Do not move from your screen, because in the next few minutes we will tell you everything about Elsa Koch, the great torturer of Nazism. But before continuing, and if you are a fan of firearms, we want to invite you to our new channel, World of Guns, dedicated to analyzing and exploring the most powerful, modern and unusual weapons in the world, as well as their combat history, their development and much more. You can find the link to the channel in the description and in the first comment, don't miss it and give us your support by subscribing to World of Guns. And now, let's continue with today's video. Ilse Koch was born on September 22, 1906 in Germany, although her original last name was Kohler. There was nothing in her childhood that heralded that she was going to become one of the worst monsters of the Third Reich. In 1932, when she was 26 years old, she joined the National Socialist Party, which was then in one of its best moments. After more than a decade seeking power, Adolf Hitler had finally consolidated his political movement, was voted for by millions of Germans and adored by his followers. They saw him as a superhuman leader, capable of saving Germany from the deep economic and political crisis in which it was stuck. The young woman was one of the many people who saw in Nazism a chance to get ahead, and it was for this reason that she joined the party. Ilse Koch immersed herself fully in the National Socialist world and was delighted when the Führer came into government and turned Germany into a dictatorship. She attended the meetings, the torchlight marches and the speeches of the main hierarchs, such as Hitler or Goebbels, the future minister of propaganda. She had friends in the SA and SS, two of the main party organizations, and through them she met Karl Otto Koch, a Nazi officer with a brilliant career ahead of him. Ilsa married him and took his last name, forming a couple that would go down in the history books as one of the most sadistic of that time. Her husband had been appointed commander of the Columbia concentration camp, so he was in charge of supervising that the inmates complied with the rules and maintained discipline. Carl was rapidly climbing the ranks within the SS, becoming considered a trusted man by Heinrich Himmler himself. Soon after, he was transferred to another camp, Sachsenhausen, near Berlin, to serve in the same position, that is, as top commander. The year was 1936, and Karl took his partner with him, giving her a job as a secretary. Despite the fact that she had to fulfill administrative tasks related to the day-to-day -day paperwork, soon after she began to exceed her duties. Ilsa was in charge of maintaining order among the prisoners, avoiding overflows, disrespect, and escape attempts. She took pleasure in flaunting her authority and knowing that others were bound to obey her. It didn't bother her at all that one of Sachsenhausen's main goals was to perfect the methods of murdering prisoners. To make the killing more efficient, the condemned were taken to a small room, where a guard proceeded to shoot them in the neck, since the gas chambers had not yet been implemented. 
The Kachas were only a few months in this place, since, soon after, the high commands of the SS promoted Karl to the position of supervisor of Buchenwald. This camp had been inaugurated in July 1937, and became one of the most important in Germany. It is estimated that some 200,000 men and women were locked up there in the years it was in operation. Of that total, more than 50,000 perished, which shows the aberrational effectiveness of the site. In other words, one in four people who were admitted found their end there. Between August 1937 and July 1941, Ilse and Otto Koch established their reign of terror in the Buchenwald concentration camp, giving free reign to their most perverse fantasies. She ordered that all prisoners who died have their money taken away, and that a sports stadium be built with those funds. The cost of the work was $1 million in current amounts. In theory, this constituted an act of stealing money that, according to Nazi regulations, belonged to Hitler, although the Kachas didn't mind ripping off their own comrades. In the stadium, Ilsa, who was an expert rider, rode her horse past a line of prisoners. She taunted them to look at her, and when any of them dared to lay their eyes on her, she whipped them mercilessly. She also enjoyed participating in the selection processes for those sentenced to the gas chambers. She would stand next to the camp doctors and point out who should die of poisoning. Her favorite victims were infants, despite the fact that she herself was the mother of three children. One of her most chilling crimes involved choosing inmates with tattoos. Once they were killed, she had their bodies skinned to make trophies, which she later used to decorate her room. In 1941, rumors spread that the Kachas had embezzled funds from the Third Reich to illegitimately enrich themselves. Once the SS found out, they launched an investigation to gather evidence against the marriage. The Nazis found evidence that money had been stolen and that Karl had also ordered the murder of three prisoners. In the past, all of them had treated the commandant of Buchenwald, who was sick with syphilis. Afraid that his medical condition would be discovered, Karl locked them up in the concentration camp and had them shot. The couple's crimes came to light, and in 1943, they were arrested for illegal appropriation of money. A year later, Karl was found guilty by a Nazi court and sentenced to death. Ironically, he was shot at Buchenwald, the place where years before he had been lord and master. Ilse tried to return to civilian life, away from National Socialism, but it was too late, as her criminal past would come back to haunt her. After Germany surrendered to the Allies, she was recognized on the street by one of her former prisoners. She was detained by the Americans and tried for war crimes, that is, for abusing and killing inmates who had no chance to defend themselves. She was found guilty of it and sentenced to life in prison, although her sentence was later changed to four years. Such a reduction was due to the fact that there was insufficient evidence of her multiple crimes. The indignation that this generated in society led to Ilsa being arrested and tried for the second time in 1950, this time with 250 witnesses of her aberrational acts. The evidence was abundant and there was no doubt that the woman was a monster. She was sentenced to life in prison and remained behind bars until 1967. As we told you at the beginning of this video, at that time Ilsa was 60 years old and her mental state was deteriorating with alarming speed. She hallucinated that her victims, the Buchenwald prisoners, were coming back to kill her. Tormented by the weight of her crimes, she committed suicide by hanging herself in her cell. Today, Ilsa Koch has gone down in history as one of the most ruthless women of the Third Reich. We have reached the end of the video, leave us your comment below and do not forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.